All right, we are here for our tw final 2022 NFL mock draft, and as it is finally draft week. Oh my gosh, this has been a long offseason. There hasn't been any, like I said, there's been nothing to talk about for the last three weeks other than Debo Samuel requesting a trade. That got a lot of press. I could go also talking about the USFL, which has had some bad press as well so far. Personally, I love the USFL, but it's had some bad press uh, according to a lot of people. But we're here to do our final 2022 NFL mock draft with trades as it is finally draft week. Starting the draft with the Jacksonville Jaguars with the first overall pick. We're going to go ahead and switch it up this time. Aiden Hutchinson, I still believe he is the best prospect available. However, I love, still do love Trayvon Walker. We're going to have him be in the first overall draft pick. According to uh, a lot of sports books, he is expected to be the first overall draft pick. And one thing we know from sports books they predict the future. I swear Simpsons should make a sports book as well because they're, they're great at predicting the future and they believe it's going to be Trayvon Walker. Personally, I do love Hutch a lot more, but Walker obviously has the upside and the physical ability to step in with the Jaguars defense and play likely on the defensive front for them, but he could also play at linebacker as they do like to run a 3-4. I'm excited to see how Mike Caldwell does use the guy uh, pairing him up with Josh Allen. Next up, and I'm sure the Lions would be totally fine with this with the second overall peck. The Lions take in-house from Michigan, Aiden Hutchinson. I'm sure Lions fans would love this to so have a guy who they were cheering for at Michigan to stay here in Detroit and play with them at that position. Likely play at the defensive end position and move Charles Harris back to outside linebacker. I believe Charles Harris did play linebacker with them before, if I have that right. I know he did when he was with um uh with the with the who, who was with with Miami in the past. Uh, but now with the Lions, they're really building a stud pass rushing team right there. You also got Romeo Aquara. That is a scary pass rushing team. Don't see him as much of a threat. Probably gonna be picking top five next year. Pick top five every year. But again, still young core right there on defense. Next up, the Houston Texans on the clock with the third overall pick, and we're going to go ahead and do it. We're going to give the Texans corner back from Cincinnati, Sauce Gardner. Sauce Gardner has a great tape in college, lockdown corner at the ACC. Him stepping in at the third overall pick a little high, higher than a lot of people. Uh, but again, corner, like I said, it's a very sought after position, and you have to have the position locked down, especially in that Texans um division right now you definitely want a corner to step onto your team and be that day one starter and hopefully lock down corner like he was at the ACC to come into that AFC South and help them help them compete in that division it's a very weak division right now but again help them compete in that division outside of the Colts the Colts are running it back the Colts are the Colts have a two three year window of competing and after that they'll likely fall apart so Ahmad Gardner will likely see all that happen when he was when he's with Texans if they do take him with third overall pick <laughs> Next up, New York Giants are on the clock. I'm surprised how many Giants fans there are. New York Giants are on the clock with the fourth overall pick. Giants are going to go ahead and have no problem taking the pass rusher from Oregon, Kayvon Thibodeau. Kayvon Thibodeau being the fourth overall pick will be a day one starter, obviously, onto that defense. Step up at outside linebacker. Yes, he has had some problems and a lot of bad press recently, but again, still. You can't argue against tape, and I say this all the time. You cannot argue against tape. The guy will be a stud in the league. New York Giants on the clock with the fifth overall draft pick. New York Giants are here, and I believe they're going to go ahead and take an offensive lineman. I Right now, I personally believe there's no question the Giants are going to take an offensive lineman somewhere in the first round of this draft. We're going to give them Iki Iguanu of NC State. Likely play right tackle for him. Keep Andrew Thomas at the left tackle position. Also, you can play him at left guard as well if you wanted to. Uh, Giants have a lot of options here, but you have to give Daniel Jones another opportunity. Per, I love Daniel Jones personally a lot more than the average guy. I just believe he hasn't been under the right system. But now with Iggy stepping onto that offensive line, no question should be able to look a lot better. Plus, Brian Dable is one of the mo a, an offensive mastermind and should build an offense around Daniel Jones to see how he can work. If not, he'll likely have a top 10 pick next year because the Giants are picking top 10, just like the Lions. Giants are picking top 10 every year and maybe can make a shot on maybe CJ Stroud. We could see him go for a quarterback in next year's draft. Now the Carolina Panthers on the clock with sixth overall pick. Panthers are desperately in need of a quarterback. Personally, don't think they should take a quarterback here. We're going to have them trade down. Panthers have a sixth overall draft pick and don't pick until I believe the fourth round. So we're going to have a big trade right here the one that's going to hit people by a surprise we're going to have the panthers actually trade down with the packers i have the packers trading up 
in all of my mock drafts. I just believe the Packers have to trade up to swing on one of these tier one wide receivers. There's no question they desperately need a wide receiver. I know they just brought in Sammy Watkins. Watkins plays two games every year. I mean, Watkins can play well into his role. Outside of that, Randall Cobb is really the only option they have at wide receiver after losing MVS. Um, Devontae Adams and losing Amiquia St. Brown. So they just lost all their top targets. And now they're stuck with washed up veteran Randy or uh, uh, um, uh, Cobb. So I'm going to have them trade up here. We're going to have the uh, Packers actually give up both first round draft picks. The 22nd overall pick they got from the Adams trade and their original 28th overall draft pick. They're going to trade all the way up to the sixth overall draft pick. I believe this is a win win for both sides. And we're going to actually have the Packers trade all the way up to grab the best wide receiver in this draft class. And it hurts to do this because I'm a diehard Vikings fan, but we're going to give them Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson is an absolute monster for coming out of the Ohio State. One of the best, arguably the best deep threat in this draft class. Coming into this class and arguably the best after the catch as well will work well onto that Packers offense and they will design a playbook around him because that man, I don't know why people argue that that drake london or some of these other names are better than garrett wilson they must have not seen the tape that i saw because that man is unstoppable and elite and him going to play with matt lafleur uh designing a playbook for him should work with green bay i would hate to see this happen but again it's a win-win i i can see it happening it's a win for the packers and a win for the for the panthers to be able to trade down the panthers do need a quarterback but again like i said they can still find a quarterback in the late first round let's be honest kenny pickett what's his ceiling eight win team i don't know how he's gonna look in his rookie season and matt rule needs to do what he can to keep his job new york giants on the clock with a seventh overall draft pick giants are sitting here and giants again they need every position we're gonna actually give them Derek stingley uh i of lsu a little bit of a high draft pick right there what's going on okay there we go a little bit of a high draft pick right there um Again, like I said, corner is such a desperate position, and especially with the Giants right now, who uh, people are shopping for James Bradbury. They've gotten a lot of calls for trading away James Bradbury. They'll need another corner to step onto that team. Even if they keep James Bradbury onto that roster, he is aging. I believe he's going into his 30s now, and getting a player to play alongside him to work with James Bradbury, who can help him develop, could benefit the Giants. If I was the Giants personally, I'm trading Bradbury, and I'm trading Saquon Barkley, and Kenny Galladay. I don't know why they're trying to get trade Kadarius Tony too. What is going on with the Giants team right now? I don't know what they're doing and why they're playing the cards the way they are. Just trade all your players who have three more years left of being great. So see what they can do going forward. Trade Galladay, trade Saquon, and maybe trade James Bradbury to the Chiefs if you can. So that's a great spot for the Giants to be to uh, get Derek Stingley at the seventh pick, in my opinion. Now the Atlanta Falcons are on the clock with the eighth overall draft pick. Falcons have every single need in the world that you can think of and they're in a massive rebuild where do you start with a rebuild you start with your head coach you start with your core with your um <clears throat> gm what do you do after that you get yourself a quarterback and who better to take with a seventh overall draft pick than quarterback from liberty malik willis i have willis going to the pan to the falcons at the eighth overall draft pick because i don't believe anybody higher than that is going to take malik willis and the falcons have two picks in the second round where they can try to build around malik willis again like i said with the afc south uh, our nfc south that's a that's a division that's wide open right now and they can compete going forward and starting with a quarterback who can maybe not be a day one starter maybe play for marcus Mariota's job see what Mariota can do onto that offense maybe he is a day one starter we'll have to see how he works with that offense but i do like him going to the falcons with the eighth pick they have a lot of young talent in aj terrell and kyle pitts as well so Obviously, with how many needs they have, they could go really any route here. I, I say start with a quarterback because you can't confirm getting a quarterback in the second round right now. Now the Seattle Seahawks on the clock, another team that needs a quarterback with the ninth overall draft pick. We're going to actually go ahead and have the Seahawks stick with Drew Locke here. Why would they stick with Drew Locke? Because Pete Carroll is 70 years old and their entire coaching staff is likely not looking to go for a full-on rebuild in the NFC West. We're going to go ahead and give them Evan Neal of Alabama. The guy is massive and he could step into the Seahawks team day one at left tackle and protect for Drew Locke. Outside of that, they do have Geno Smith still on the bench. So I think they're still going to be able to be a mid team i think they're going to be able to do something this next season i don't believe they're going to take a quarterback in the first round this year quite yet i expect them actually to trade for a quarterback maybe jimmy garoppolo or someone and run it back and take a quarter or take an offensive tackle instead and evan neal at the ninth pick is a perfect spot for him to go next up the new york giants on the clock with the 10th pick 
another team that has a lot of needs we're actually going to go ahead and have them trade down so they can fill some more of their needs they're going to trade down with the new orleans saints new orleans saints give the 16th overall draft pick and a 49th overall draft pick for this 10th overall draft pick from the new york jets and we're going to go ahead and have the saints trade up why not for a quarterback not for a wide receiver but an offensive tackle taking Charles Cross of Mississippi State. After the Saints saw that Evan Neal and Iki Iguanu were already taken off the board, they wanted to go for one of those tier 10 often or tier one offensive tackles taking Charles Cross of Mississippi State with the 10th pick trading into the top 10 to take him uh to fill in for um Taron Armstead who just left their team and likely honestly how the NFC South has played their cards I think they're trying to actually run it back this next season which is coming by kind of a surprise after losing Sean Payton and Drew Brees they're trying to run it back with Jameis Winston so I was that came by kind of a surprise so uh we'll see how they can play into that NFC South again the NFC South is a very weak division right now outside of um Tampa Bay Buccaneers there's not much uh competition for the New Orleans Saints so we could see them traded to the top 10 they've already made some trades they made it clear they're looking to go or a rebuild and yet they haven't taken a quarterback so i don't have them taking a quarterback this they're trading into the top 10 to get their new offensive lineman and really build an entire complete offensive line right there with a new left tackle in charles cross after losing their all pro left tackle new york jets trading down will be beneficial for them as well trading down six spots and picking up one of those midday draft picks Next up, Washington Commanders on the clock with the 11th overall draft pick, another team that has so many needs. We're going to go ahead and give them wide receiver of USC Drake London. Stepping into that offense, I believe I had Drake London going to uh, Washington before. Him pairing up with Terry McLaurin, two play styles that perfectly pair up together. Could look well into that Washington Commanders offense that desperately needs help. And Commanders, apparently, same with the Commanders. I'm surprised that they're not going for a rebuild and going to actually try to win their division this next season with Carson Wentz. Injury-prone Carson Wentz going to FedEx Field, which is known to breed a lot of quarterback injury. So we're going to see how that pans out. But Drake Lyon going to play with them of USC should be great for the Washington Commanders. Now my Minnesota Vikings on the clock with a 12th overall draft pick are super, super sad that they were not able to get Derek Stingley or Ahmad Gardner as they went pretty high for their position or high because of their position. Vikings on the clock with a 12th pick are going to go ahead and take a next up DB in Notre Dame safety, top safety in the class, most well-rounded prospect in this class, Kyle freaking Hamilton stepping onto the Minnesota Vikings defense day one to start alongside all pro future Super Bowl champ and future Hall of Famer Harrison Harrison Harry the Hitman Smith and now playing alongside him will help Kyle Hamilton develop and be great for this Vikings secondary as we desperately need all the help we can get and we also have Patrick Peterson future Hall of Famer as well so this will be helpful helpful for Kyle Hamilton to develop playing alongside a lot of Hall of Famers and Ed Donatel led defense. So uh, this could help him. Obviously, taking a safety at the 12th pick is a little high. However, Kyle Hamilton will make the exception for him. We'll make the exception for him. Plus, this is Kwesi's first draft pick ever. Got a hit on your first draft pick. Feel like this is pretty much a lock that'll work in the league. Next up, Houston Texans on the clock with the 13th overall draft pick. Texans are on the clock, and they're ready to take best player available. And in my opinion, my personal opinion. We're going to actually go ahead and give him Jermaine Johnson, the second of Florida State, to step onto that Houston Texans defense that desperately needs all the help they can get. After the Texans took Ahmad Gardner with the third overall draft pick, they now have another player stepping on on defense day one to likely end up being core player on that defense, Jermaine Johnson at the 13th pick. I believe that's a pretty much of a lock that it's going to work. Him and Ahmad Gardner of Cincinnati and Florida State Two guys from the South uh, going to stay in the South with Houston to play onto that defense. Great draft picks for Houston, if you ask me. Next up, the Baltimore Ravens on the clock with a 14th pick. I believe Baltimore Ravens are going to get a lot of offers to trade down, and they're going to consider it. They're going to consider trading down. However, there's one player here, Devontae Wyatt of Georgia, which I believe is a perfect, outstanding fit onto that, onto that Ravens defense right now. I believe as of right now, Devontae Wyatt going into the Ravens defense is the final piece, the final seasoning to the Ravens success. Ravens right now are a dark horse Super Bowl candidate. Yeah, they're picking 14th overall, which is very high, but that's going to help them to make a Super Bowl this next year. As remember last year, do you remember this 2021 season? We got a 
crossed, we kind of marked out the Ravens. We marked them out halfway through the season. That's not because they were bad. That's not because they were terrible. That's because they had so many injuries. Now, if this next season, if they're able to stay healthy, Tyler Huntley is a great enough of a backup to step into Lamar Jackson's shoes and fill his role. You have Rashad Bateman and going into year two, you have a defense loaded with superstars and veterans and multiple talent and one of the best coaching staffs in the league. Oh yeah, you got golden leg just uh, Tucker also onto your team. So that's really a complete roster with Devontae Wright, Wyatt going onto that Ravens defense. I believe that's going to make him a Super Bowl contender this next season. Having him stepping onto that defense really completes their defense right there. Next up, Philadelphia Eagles on the clock with a 15th overall draft pick. Like I said, I think Philadelphia Eagles are also going to get some trade offers here. Eagles are going to quickly go ahead, run, turn in their car to take Trent McDuffie of Washington. A lot of people are very, very skeptical on Trent McDuffie, which I don't understand. I, I mean, yeah, top 10 pick is a little high, but him going to the Eagles right here at 15 is perfect. He's playing with the Eagles defense that is loaded with talent. And now he's going into that defense and being a day one starter or I guess technically not, not a day one starter. He'll start at nickel back for him. He'll be that slot guy for them. And he can is pretty much the final piece, like I said with the Ravens, kind of the final piece to the Eagles' success, to having a complete defense right there. And same with Ravens. I'd expect both these bird teams to become Super Bowl contenders with their next draft picks. Devontae Wyatt will finish that Eagle or that Ravens defense. McDuffie will finish that Eagles defense. Plus, they're getting a little old. The Eagles defense get a little old. They got a two, three year, year window of being a great defense. <coughs> Next up, we have the New York Jets on the clock with the 16th overall draft pick. This is from the Saints trade, Saints trading down. Now the Jets on the clock here. I believe they're going to go ahead and take right off the board. Jamison Williams of Alabama. After Jamison Williams is expected to be healthy uh, week one, uh, uh, after torning his, tearing his ACL in the championship game, he is expected to be 100%. Him stepping onto that Jets defense, you have him, arguably, the, in my opinion, the best deep threat in this draft class. Elijah Moore and Corey Davis, you're building a stud offense right there. I like the way they tackled free agency, bringing in a lot of players into the offensive line as well, and bringing in CJ Ozma and Tyler Conklin. I mean, that's a loaded offense. They've done a great job building around Zach Wilson. Now, their defense is very lackluster. However, Robert Salah is a defensive mastermind and can turn that defense around very quickly. So I believe this right here is a perfect fit for the New York Jets. Jets fans, I know there's a lot of you. Surprisingly, there is a lot of New York Jets fans who tune into the show. Now, you guys taking Kayvon Thibodeau with the fourth overall draft pick and trading down to take Jamison Williams with the 16th overall draft pick seems like a win, massive win if you ask me. Now the Los Angeles Chargers are on the clock with a 17th overall draft pick. We're going to actually have a trade down right here. Chargers don't have a second round draft pick. We're going to have them trade down a couple spots with the Pittsburgh Steelers who have the 20th draft pick. We're going to have them trade up just a few spots, maybe give up one of these mid-round draft picks. We'll say... Yeah, we'll, we'll have him give a 138th overall draft pick. Why not? They're going to trade up a few spots to the 17th overall draft pick and go ahead and take their guy who they love in Pittsburgh, and that is Kenny Pickett. Pittsburgh Steelers trading up a few spots to keep Kenny Pickett in Pitt for going from Pittsburgh Panthers to Pittsburgh Steelers, staying there to trade up a few spots. Pittsburgh fans, by the way, I see a lot of Pittsburgh fans getting mad at me for taking a quarterback. Why? Why are Pittsburgh fans not a fan of taking a quarterback in this draft? Do I have to pull up Mitchell Trubisky's stats for you? Do I have to pull up how bad Mitchell Trubisky has been in the past? How he completely ruined a Super Bowl team in Chicago? A team that should have been a Super Bowl team. Had the best defense in all of football. An offense loaded with a lot of talent and made him fall apart. Do I have to pull up stats right now? That guy is not your future quarterback going forward. Pittsburgh, I know you have a great roster. You can compete next year. Kenny Pickett, best tape in college. Pittsburgh fans saw it. He was already there in Pitt. Trading just a few spots to get above the New Orleans Saints who are looking for a quarterback. Trading up to take your future franchise quarterback seems like a massive win if you ask me. I don't know what Pittsburgh fans are over here talking about not taking a good quarterback, sticking with Mitchell Trubisky at quarterback and Mason Rudolph being your backup, but trading up to take Kenny Pickett is a massive win if you ask me. I like that pick for them. Keep him in Pittsburgh and you can run it back. New Orleans, or 
Philadelphia Eagles on the clock with the 18th overall draft pick. Philadelphia Eagles quickly turn in their card, run to turn in their card to take another wide receiver in the first round in Chris Olave. Huge falling offs from Chris Olave in these next up guys. However, him going to Eagles, that is scary. Eagles getting McDuffie and Olave is an A-plus draft, an A-plus first round for the Philadelphia Eagles to get a player who can step in at slot corner and a player who can step in at slot wide receiver. You have two slot guys going into a pass-heavy league. You can play them into that offense, have them play alongside um, Devontae Smith onto that offense and Zach Paschal. You have a great offense right there, Philadelphia Eagles. Plus, I really do love Dallas Goddard. I think Dallas Goddard is arguably the most underrated player in the entire league right now. That man is a stud of a tight end, and him playing into the offense would be great. Philadelphia Eagles, personally, I hate you. But with that being said, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be unbiased here and give you guys two great draft picks who will step up into your offense and defense side of the ball. Eagles love, love to take wide receivers in the first round like they did the last two years as well. Plus, Jalen Rager shouldn't see anywhere near a football field. Don't even suit him up. Don't even give him a uniform this next season. Just have him be there. You can pay him money. He's on his rookie contract, but yeah, he does not deserve to even be in an Eagles uniform. Don't even give him a uniform. Give him a Dallas uniform and let him be there. Next up, New Orleans Saints on the clock with a 19th overall draft pick. New Orleans Saints here again with another draft pick. Probably would have took Kenny Pickett if he was there. Maybe swing on another quarterback, see what you can do. Dennis Allen now coming in should get his guy. However, it's looking like they're going to run it back. So we're going to go ahead and actually give him a corner here. Yeah, not the biggest need for them, but Andrew Booth of Clemson is a great pick if you ask me to be taking him here with the 19th overall draft pick. Andrew Booth of Clemson can step in onto that defense and play alongside Marshawn Lattimore. They are very thin at the cornerback position right now. Who did they have this last year? Can't remember who was playing alongside uh, Marshawn Lattimore this last year. That's how bad they were. That I don't even remember their starting corner who was playing alongside him. But him stepping into that defense would be great. That's a secondary that needs a lot of help and a defense that is very old that could help Andrew Booth develop. Next up, we have the Los Angeles Chargers back on the clock after trading down a few spots with Pittsburgh with the 20th overall draft pick. Now the Chargers are on the clock. Chargers have a lot of options here. We're going to actually go ahead and give them a player who a lot of people are very high on. That's because of his how he's ranked in a lot of statistics. And that is Jordan Davis of Georgia, the third Georgia defensive lineman to be drafted in this class. After number one, we had Trayvon Walker. We had Devontae Wyatt going to the <clears throat> Ravens at 14 and at 20, Jordan Davis. And also the other Georgia defensive lineman is going to be drafted next year, top five. So that is a stud defense right there. That Georgia defense is unstoppable and having your entire defensive front being first round draft picks. Jordan Davis going to Chargers will help them out. Stepping in day one as a nose tackle for them would be great as they were one of the worst defenses against the run this last year. Now them bringing in JC Jackson was a massive win. Them bringing in Khalil Mack, not the best for how much they gave up for Khalil Mack, if you ask me, but still going to obviously improve their defense right there. They still have Joey Bosa rushing the pass. They just need players who are better against the run, and Jordan Davis can be one of those guys. For their sake, I'm hoping Kenneth Murray can develop as well because, man, those their defense has been through a lot. That defense has been through a lot, and Chargers, if they had a good defense, could honestly compete for a Super Bowl. Let's be honest. They could for how great of an offense they have, and they did hit on their left tackle this last year as well, so... Stud offense just need to improve defensively and starting against the run with Jordan Davis, who is built like a fucking planet. Next up, we have the New York New England Patriots on the clock with a 21st overall draft pick. Like the Patriots do, Patriots do what the Patriots do, and that is trading down. We're gonna have them trade down. Uh here we're gonna have them trade down. Who do we have them trade? We're going to have them trade down with Washington. We're going to have the Washington Commanders trade up, giving their 47th overall draft pick, so they're going to trade up quite a bit. 20 draft picks, 26 draft picks to be exact. Trading up 26 draft picks, they're going to give up a couple mid-rounders as well. They're going to trade up to get that 21st overall draft pick and go ahead, or actually... Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We're going to go ahead and have the commanders trade up. Why? Because commanders have one more piece to helping their success, and that is taking <coughs> Nicobe, D no, Devin Lloyd. They're going to take Devin Lloyd of Utah to step onto that Washington commanders defense. This commanders defense that took Devin Lloyd previously took J uh, Drake London, two core players that should step up onto that offense and defense to help them succeed and step up and compete in the NFC East this next season because... Like every year, the NFC East is wide open, and Commanders can take that division, Eagles can take that division, Cowboys can take that division, 
anybody can take that division and the nfc east like i said is wide open so devin lloyd stepping onto that team trading all the way up to take him with the 21st pick to get a stud absolute stud off ball linebacker to step up on their defense next up Carolina Panthers on the clock with a 22nd pick. This is after they traded down out of the sixth pick with the Packers picking up two Packers first rounders with the 22nd pick. The Carolina Panthers on the clock are going to go ahead. And who do they take here? They take other linebacker that is desperately needed stud of Georgia, Nicobe Dean, another Georgia player that Georgia defensive player on this draft class. God, there's so many Georgia players. Nicobe Dean stepping onto the Panthers defense. Finally, an inside linebacker that could actually play well. They haven't had a great inside linebacker since Luke Keekley, so they desperately need someone who can play metal linebacker for them. And man, that Panthers defense is actually scary now. Having Nicobe Dean stepping up at middle linebacker, a huge, huge swing, and hopefully for their sake, a massive hit to step onto that defense and really complete a defense that is already good. Already a good defense, already a solid secondary, solid defense. And Nicobe Dean is really filling that final piece that they need. So the Panthers being a complete defense. Next up, Arizona Cardinals on the clock with the 23rd pick for a team picking at 23. They have a lot of needs. And that's why right here with the 23rd pick, we're going to go ahead and give them an offensive lineman. Give Kyler Murray some more help here. And they're going to take Trevor Penning of uni Trevor Penning, a massive offensive tackle coming in from a smaller school is going to kind of tank his draft stock a little bit and maybe fall into the second round, but him stepping into that defense or into the offensive line will be a day one starter somewhere on the offensive line, likely at left guard, left tackle, if possible. Next up, Dallas Cowboys on the clock with the 24th overall draft pick. Cowboys just sit in pretty here, ready to do whatever they can, and they're ready to turn in their card. They're ready to take a corner. They're ready to take a wide receiver. But no, they get an offer from the Chicago Bears. Yes, I know there's not a lot of Bears fans excited about this first round. Why? Because they don't have a first round pick. Well, in this, they're going to actually trade up into the first round, giving up a couple draft picks to trade into the first round. Why? Because they have a player on the board that they desperately want at this draft pick. Come on. Why is it not working? They have a player on this on this board that they desperately want into the first round, so they make a trade with the Dallas Cowboys and quickly turn in the board to get Tyler Linderbaum of Iowa. Yes, Tyler Linderbaum. They trade up for a, a center. Not seen very often, but why do I have the Bears trading up for a center? First of all, their offensive line absolutely sucks, and they have their future franchise quarterback, Justin Fields playing under arguably the worst offensive line in all of football. They don't have anybody who can play center and they desperately need a center. So why not take the best center in my opinion that I've ever seen play college football, stepping into this draft, falling to the 24th pick where the, where the Chicago bears will trade up and this way. They can move Lucas Patrick back to guard where he, belongs i don't know why they're having lucas patrick playing center for them move them back to guard can really help out their offensive line there and dang the chicago bears team not even just the offensive line the offensive general is absolute garbage they need help all around the board they've done a terrible job building around justin fields obviously giving up their first round draft pick I, yeah they would have had the seventh overall pick so giving up a lot of draft capital have done a terrible job and put themselves in a terrible position to build around Justin Fields. And I believe bringing in a center like Tyler Lindebaum will be the right move, uh, the right step to success for that Bears offensive line and can really help build around Linder or build around uh, Fields going forward. So I have him trading into the first round in this mock draft. Next up, Buffalo Bills with a 25th overall draft pick. Bills are going to quickly turn in the card, go with a wide receiver here, and that would be Traylon Burks of Arkansas. And Burks stepping into that Bills offense will play alongside the Stephon Diggs, one of the best deep threats in the league, arguably the best deep threat in the league. Play alongside him. You can also have uh, who, who stepped up for them late this last season. I can't even remember. Burks will likely be a slot guy for them. I have a sl name slipping my mind right now, but the guy who was uh, a stud at the end of this last season, I can't even remember. They did just lose Cole Beasley right now. So Traylon Burks likely be that wide receiver three roll onto their offense for their team and really give them another opportunity uh, for, to have another player for Josh Allen to work with. So can, this would be a great, great, great pick. Great pick, in my opinion. Next up, Tennessee Titans on the clock with the 26th overall draft pick. Once again, the Titans are going to go for another, another edge defender in 
George Karloftis, who PFF have ranked the 10th. George Karloftis going to the Tennessee Titans at the 26th overall draft pick is a little low compared to a lot of people, but this guy has T-Rex arms and he's tiny. But what does he also have? A beautiful, outstanding tape at Purdue. And him going into that Georgia or onto that Tennessee Titans defensive line right there. Probably going to actually play outside linebacker for him, uh, play alongside Harold Landry there. They also have Jeffrey Simmons, so a lot of stud pass rushers for him to play with and can really work onto that defense. Obviously, the Titans have a lot of needs offensively, but if Karloftis is there, I believe this is best player available for the Titans to plug in as a day one starter onto that defense. And for a team that finished first in the AFC East or in the AFC as a whole, they have a lot of needs on to that team. I said AFC East, but it was AFC South. Next up, Tampa Bay Buccaneers with the 27th overall draft pick. We're going to go ahead and give the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers some more help for Tom Brady. See what they can do to help out Tom Brady here. And that would be taking the best guard in this draft class, Zion Johnson of Boston College. Zion Johnson likely play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at left guard, starting left guard for them. They have Shaq Mason, who they just brought in at right guard. Still have Tristan Wirfs at right tackle. They have Donovan Smith at left tackle. What else is there to do to continue to try to make Tom Brady, 45-year-old Tom Brady, happy? Nothing. Nothing. He wants to retire, but he can't. They've done a great job building around him, and Zion Johnson would be that really the final piece to their offensive line to trying to get Tom Brady to continue to play football, to continue to play for their team. This would make them a complete offense right here if they are already a complete offense. This would really add that final piece that they need. Now, obviously, to be a complete team, they do need to completely help out that secondary. That secondary is god-awful, and after losing Jordan White, White hair on top of that, I don't really have any help on that secondary right now, uh, so... This could definitely help them out. Zion Johnson onto that offense could complete their offense right there. Carolina Panthers on the clock with a 28th pick. This is after trading out of the sixth overall draft pick where the where the Packers traded up to take Garrett Wilson, best wide receiver in this class. Now the Pan Panthers are on the clock with a 28th pick. And like I said previously, I believe the Panthers are going to target a quarterback, just not at the sixth pick. And right here at the 28th pick, they're going to take in my opinion, the most underrated quarterback in this draft class, and that is Desmond Ritter of Cincinnati. I don't know what else there is to see from Desmond Ritter to say that he's not worth a first-round draft pick. And fine, you can argue second-round draft pick, early second, fine. Quarterbacks go early every year, though, and there's no question teams are going to at least consider taking Desmond Ritter into the first round. This guy coming out of Cincinnati single-handedly carried his team to a playoff appearance from Cincinnati. I mean, what more is there to say? This man is a absolute monster. Now, obviously, there was other core players on that team, like Ahmad Gardner. But looking at it specifically, Desmond Ritter going to the right system will work in the league. And I've, me I've mentioned it many times that I believe Desmond Ritter will have the best NFL career of any quarterback in this draft class. Now, if he goes to Panthers, probably not. But if he goes to the right situation, maybe goes to Saints or Seattle, could be a different story. Next up, Chiefs on the clock with the 29th and 30th pick. Like I said in previous mock drafts, I don't believe the Chiefs are going to trade up because they have a lot of needs for a team as great as the Chiefs are Super Bowl contenders every year, AFC champions every year, or at least in the AFC championship every year. They have a lot of needs, a lot of needs. And we're going to go ahead and give them wide receiver. Where can I find them? Jahan Donson of Penn State. I'm big on Jahan Donson. I think he's going to have a great NFL career. Him being a smaller guy obviously will likely tank his draft stock, but in my opinion, he's still worth the first round draft pick. He is a monster of a pass catcher and a deep threat. And him being on Patrick Mahomes' team, obviously, you know the Chiefs. You know how Eric Bieniemy rolls, Andy Reid. They make every wide receiver look like Randy Moss. So stepping onto that team, Jahan Donson will likely fill in for Tyreek Hill's shoes and hot take probably going to be just as good as Tyree Kill. Sorry. Sorry. We're going to have to wait and see. But I believe it's going to happen. Him playing onto that Chiefs team at the 30th overall draft pick. The Chiefs are back onto the clock. And we're going to go, go ahead and give him a corner here. A lot of people say an offensive line. We're going to give him a corner here because they desperately need it. And that's going to be Kair Elam of Florida. I believe he's no question worth a first round draft pick for being a corner. Um, we're going to see how he looks in the league. Obviously, a lot of red flags when it comes to Alam. I think he's going to have a great career, though. I don't have really any doubts with him. Next up, Bengals on the clock with the 31st overall draft pick. We're going to have another corner go here, and that's going to be Roger McCreary of Auburn. I have McCreary going in the first round in a lot of drafts, another player with a lot of red flags. But again, McCreary, I love the guy. I love his trash talking. I love how this guy rolls. Him playing with Auburn will likely be a success going into that Bengals defense that desperately needs help into the secondary. Someone who can play alongside 
Chidobi Awozie. Do I have his name right? I think I have his name right. Next up, we have the Detroit Lions finally on the clock with a 32nd overall draft pick, and they desperately need a quarterback, but we're going to actually not give them a quarterback here. Why? Like I said, Detroit Lions pick top five every year. If they take a quarterback here, if they take Sam Howell here, they're going to be picking top five next year anyways. Why take a quarterback here? You can get him next year. We're going to actually give him a wide receiver. Oh, we're going to give him a wide receiver, and we're going to go ahead and find Christian Watson of NDSU. I love Watson. I love this guy. Him going into that Detroit Lions team would be great. Now, obviously not a place you typically want to go. Detroit is where careers go to die. That's where you want to go when you're a wide receiver because you're going to get a lot of targets onto that offense. Maybe the second most targets since next season as a rookie 32nd overall draft pick will likely be the second most targeted player behind TJ Hawkinson. So that really wraps up my my uh, first round, final first round mock draft with trades 2022 NFL draft as we are finally here NFL draft week. I hope you all did enjoy this mock draft. If you did, be sure to rate, subscribe to the show. Um, tune in for more. We're going to be live this Thursday. We're going to be live streaming the entire draft. This is not something I've ever done. I've never live streamed a draft or a game. We're kind of trying to broaden more than just a talk show here and go into some more live streams and some more um some more how do i say this we're trying to broaden our our uh approaches to new content pretty much so that's what we're going for here and that's this is exactly what's going to happen everything i just said on this draft is exactly what's going to happen in the first round so we'll be reacting to all of that live on the morning kickoff youtube channel i hope you all enjoy